Our God in heaven, Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, Almighty King of Glory, we thank and bless you for this opportunity you have given to us to hear you, to listen to you. Faithful Father, let this word profit us. Don't let the devil cause any hindrance to our access to these blessings. We will hear your word. We will store it in our heart. We will use it in our lives that we may be richly blessed of you. Father, we thank you for this privilege you have given to us. Help us to utilize it maximally and let us be richly blessed of you. Hear and answer this prayer. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, we are very grateful unto our Almighty God for the grace He has given to us to be here this evening. Our God is a wise God, and at all times He desires that we hear His word so that constantly the devil's effort on us will be blocked. The devil's effort to draw us back will never succeed. So let us be wise to hear these words, store them, use them, and get the blessings God intends. He doesn't want us to forget him. And on a constant basis, he talks to us, he speaks to us, he admonishes us. Don't block your hearing. Don't block your understanding. The admonition is titled, Doing the Will of God from the Heart. Doing the Will of God from the Heart. This is most profitable. This is most blessed. When you do the will of God from your heart. Anything you are doing from the heart is dedication. Let us endeavor to do the will of our almighty God from our heart. Loving God from our heart. Worshipping God from our heart. Doing it as something that is from our free will, as not something that we are being forced to do. That is the call to those who are true children of God. Doing the will of the Lord from your heart. We read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 6. Ephesians chapter 6, we are reading verse 6. Yes. Not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Doing the will of God from the, the heart. Look, this service of God, don't do it with eye service. Oh, the pastor is around. Let me pretend. Oh, the deacons are around. Let me do eye service. No. Don't do eye service. In the thing that pertains to God. In the thing that belongs to God. Do it from your heart. That's what the Bible is encouraging us to do. Doing the will of God from the heart. Don't do it with eye service. But as the servants of Christ. Doing the will of God. From the bottom of your heart. Brethren, we must have a right heart attitude. In our worship of God. We must. Right attitude. The way we are serving God. 
Let it be from the heart. So that when God will look at your heart, he will look at my heart, he will know you are genuine, you are faithful, you are good, you love him. God cannot walk in us without our consent. He won't walk in us. He won't walk with us until he sees a heart that consent to him. So don't do anything superficially. Don't work for him superficially. Don't give to him superficially. Do it from your heart. No wonder. And that is the expectation. That is what you and I should be doing. Don't just know it in the head. Do the will of God from your heart. That is God's expectation. The question now is to ask, are we doing the will of God because we want him to bless us? Are you doing the will of God because you want him to bless you? That would be a selfish reason. You just want his blessings. No. You should love him. From your heart. Love him. Do his will. From your heart. Not just to receive his blessings. Thereafter, you have nothing to do with him. Today, what we see, people pray. Bless me, O Lord. And the Lord will answer such prayers. And the object for which God has blessed you will turn around to fight God. It's what you will use to fight God. Which means you are selfish. You are not doing the will of God from your heart. So let us not be among this group of people to obey God just to avoid punishment. is also a selfish reason. You are obeying God so that he will not punish you. Mm -mm. Love him. Do his will from your heart. That's his expectation. That's how he wants you to live. Not because of fear of punishment. No, let it go beyond that. I don't want to wrong my God. He has done so much for me. He has blessed me. I don't want to go wrong. I don't want to wrong him. I want to please him in all things. I want to do his will all around. That is the expectation. Don't do it. Because of fear of punishment. There must be vigor, power, freshness, reality, eagerness, and want in our service. Do it eagerly. Do it because you love God. Serve him with zeal. That will show it is from your heart. That will demonstrate your love for God. You know, 
when we say we love somebody, we are willing to sacrifice. We are willing to do all within our powers for such persons. That is the expectation. That is how you will go about your relationship with God. Psalm 40, we read verse 8. Psalms 40, verse 8. Psalm 40, we are reading verse 8. Yes. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. I delight to do thy will. I'm happy to do what pleases you. That's what should be the attitude of a true child of God. I delight. I'm happy to do it. Thy law is within my heart. It's there inside me. I know it. I want to practice it. I want to obey you from day to day. Brethren, this should characterize all true children of God. Check yourself. Do you find it difficult even to come for the services? Do you find it hard to come and worship your God, give your time to God? Is it so difficult for you? There you begin to see how much you love God. How much you love him. You know, some things, except we check, we wouldn't know. COVID-19 made us to start running one-line service, isn't it? Uh-huh. And we got so used to it, and we want to continue, isn't it? One line. See? We begin to gauge how much we love God. How much you want to remain in his sanctuary? There you will know. Because you will now wait. Is it to stay here and worship God throughout the day? Or you do it halfway, then you go to look for places where you enjoy yourself, isn't it? A place where you can play around, talk to friends. No. No. The house of God. We love it. We want to stay here. And give God worship. We love it. Other places, they are vain. Vain places. You can't compare anywhere with the house of God. You can't. That's the truth. When you truly love God, you will love his sanctuary. You will want to be here. You will want to join God's people to give a holy worship unto God. want to fellowship. This is the truth. Philippians chapter 2 we read verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 reading verse 12. Philippians chapter 2 we are reading verse 12. Wherefore my beloved as he have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. Don't do it as I service. The worship of God. Don't do it with I service. 
when the minister is there, when he is not there. Serve God from the heart. Walk out your salvation with trembling and fear. Walk it out. That's the mind of God. That's the way he wants you to do it. Brethren, we need to be mindful of this. These things are getting down. Things are going down. And God is not happy. He's doing so much for us. He's blessing us. Yet, we don't show commensurate love for him. For his worship. We don't. We have to be dragged along. God is seeing the heart. God knows the heart. We need to improve. Don't do it with eye service. Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Fear to touch evil. Fear to do evil. Fear to go against the commandment of the Almighty God. Fear. The God, the Almighty God is so good. So good to you, to me. For us to think of offending him. He's good. He cares for us every day of our life. Don't even think very far away. Don't think very far away. The air. He gives you a me to breathe. Is it not wonderful? Can you survive one minute, two minutes, if it takes away the, the oxygen you are taking? You can't. Just that alone. Just that alone. Take, be breathing. Be alive. He's too good. He's doing so many things. Is it the same God we are supposed to offend? Is it the same God who cares for us day and night? Look. Hmm. If you know the amount of battles God is fighting for you in the day, in the night, <laughs> you will kneel down, raise your hand. You will say, God, I thank you. You sleep well, wake up well. It's not ordinary. <laughs> Open your ears and hear. Somebody is keeping vigil over you. Somebody is waiting of evil forces that would have swallowed you alive. Somebody is doing great work on you, on me. Once a while, he allows you to see it, isn't it? Hey, God, help me. Oh, help me. This thing. Ah. All these other times, God has been on your side, on my side. It's a great God. You should, shouldn't offend him. You shouldn't go against him. This is what we are saying, that we should do his will from the heart. The loving father. A kind God. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Colossians chapter 3, 22 and 23. Colossians chapter 3, we are reading verse 22 and 23. 
Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Do it heartily and unto the Lord. That's the call to everyone of God's own children. Put God in your mind. Do everything so that you are serving God from the heart. Very important. It goes beyond our service unto God. Even those that are servants. Fear God. In your relationship with your master. Fear God. Do everything from the heart. As you are doing it to God, do it to man. So all round, you are complete. You are serving God, you are serving your earthly masters. That is how we will live our lives in order that God will be pleased with us. God will be happy with us. First Thessalonians chapter 2, we read verse 4. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4. First Thessalonians chapter 2, we are reading verse 4. Yes. But as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which trieth our hearts. Yeah. We are not pleasing men. We are pleasing God, because it is God that tries our heart, that sees our heart, that knows our intentions. He knows your intention. He knows my intention. Do everything to please God. That is the call to us. That is how we will weigh our actions. Our behaviors. Are we doing the will of God from the heart? Ensure you know the will of God. Pursue it with vigor. Those things that please God, know them. Prepare yourself. To do those things. To go after those things. Matthew chapter 7. We read verse 21. Matthew chapter 7. We read verse 21. The gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 7. We are reading verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. You see it. Not everyone that is in Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Those that are doing the will of God from the heart will enter. So there are some that are just doing it on the surface. There are many that are doing it on the surface. And it's not pleasing God. This point here is very, very significant. God is saying... But those who are doing eye service, they have no portion in his kingdom. The people that will enter are those who are doing the will of God from the heart. 
thank God it is clearly spelled out for you to know, for you to understand. Are you practicing the will of God day by day? Are you? This is a serious matter. It touches on eternal life. This matter we are discussing. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 Hebrews 10 36 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36 For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God ye might receive the promise Good. After you have done the will of God, you might receive the... Yes. You see, God has attached a promise to give eternal life to those who do his will from the heart. Be patient. Persevere. Endure. Let it be your lifestyle. Continue. So that you will inherit the promise. So that I will also inherit the promise. That's the promise. When you do the will of God from the heart, the Almighty God will reward you. The Almighty God will bless you. You need perseverance. So that you go through. So that you inherit the promise. This is the word of God. So there is a call to us. To be sincere. Very sincere. Very truthful. Do the will of God. From your heart. Don't joke with it. Don't do eye service. Hebrews thirteen twenty one Hebrews thirteen twenty one Hebrews chapter thirteen verse twenty one yes. make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory for ever and ever yeah. Amen Amen God wants to walk in you to do his will. The way God can walk in us to do his will is when we surrender to him. Surrender. God, take over. I surrender my will. He will walk through you to do his will. So we need to understand it. There has to be that surrender. Let your will be done. Then he will walk through you to accomplish his will. To do his will. But when we are not living surrendered lives, Sorry, it doesn't work out. It doesn't go the way we anticipate. And so there is need to be very careful so that you do the right thing. So that you will be in a proper position to do the will of God. You don't get to a point where you begin to argue with God argument with God is a sign of immaturity. You are not a mature child of God. When you argue, do it like this. You know, ah, no, Adam, me, I don't understand it like that. It's a sign you are not mature. And you are not willing. You are not ready 
to do the will of God from the heart. First Peter chapter four verse two. First Peter chapter four verse two. First Peter chapter four verse two that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. The will of God is important in your life. The remaining life you live, you have, don't live it in lust, in unrighteousness. Live it in the will of do the will of God from your heart. The remaining time you have. The remaining time I have. These are warnings. These are things we should take note of. These are things we should observe so that we'll be well guided. To avoid waste of time waste of time. You waste time and you lose out. Wasting of time. Live the rest of your life in the will of God. Take note, brother, sister. Very important for you. Very important for me. So that we can do the will of God from the heart. First John chapter two. We we'll read verse seventeen. First John two seventeen. First John chapter two, we are reading verse seventeen. And the world passeth away, hmm. and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. He abideth forever. See all these other things you are seeing. All these other things I am seeing. They are for a little time. They will pass. They will pass. But he that doeth the will of God will abide forever. So, here is a choice. Here is a choice for you. Do the will of God from your heart and you live forever. Do the will of God from your heart, you inherit eternity. It's choice. Or follow the lust of this world. And you go, as time is going, you are going, everything about you will be forgotten. Very important. Let us all take grace from God. It's an opportunity to be well guided. That's why we're thankful for the Bible teaching us things we must observe in order to make it to the kingdom of heaven. It's a privilege for you to be able to hear and understand the Bible so that the rest is left in your hands to be guided, to follow the right way, to do the will of God and be blessed. John chapter 8, verse 29. 8, 29. St. John's Gospel, chapter 8, we are reading verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. I do always those things that please him. 
There is a commitment. Look at what he said. I want to do it always, every time. To do the things that please God. It takes commitment. Dedication. Unity of purpose. I do it always. To please my God. Brother, sister, that should be your target. Every day. Every time. You want to do the will of God from your heart. You want to please God from your heart. It's important. I keep telling you, the world we are in now, is excessively corrupt. Excessively corrupt. If you don't take time, it will deceive you. If you don't take time, you will spend the whole of your life in lust. You will be outside the will of God. You will be doing those things that don't please God. Spend so much time in those things. And you put yourself at a disadvantage. You put yourself at a disadvantage. So, take steps. Be determined. From this moment, you have heard that you should do the will of God from your heart. Be determined. Ask for grace. Ask for backup from the Almighty God to help you, to help me to do the will of the Almighty God from the heart. The Lord God will bless these words in our hearts in Jesus' name. One is our master. One is our master, the blessed Redeemer. Strong is the bond that unites us in Him. Bond in the love, His own Spirit has kindled. Burn with the light that will never grow dim. Brethren in Jesus, let all be faithful, faithful to Him. And love in obedience, still in his glory of Sabbath's grace. Home is our master, with gladness we submit to live the will of the Lord from the heart. Though in his strength is met. In weakness, all that is needful, His grace will impart. Brethren, in Jesus, let us be faithful, faithful to Him who is guiding our ways through in allegiance and love in obedience, still in His glory of Sabbath's Is our master the highest and noblest? Yet in the standard, the soul is the same. It's our honor to follow his banner. Blessings forever be on to his name. Brethren in Jesus, let us be faithful, faithful to him. And love in obedience, still in His glory, Hosanna to His
Christ our Master and hope in the suffers watching and ready whether he may come changed in his image from glory to glory joyful reward in his kingdom and hope brethren in Jesus let us be faithful faithful to him Yes, still in his 